Greetings viewers, what we have here is a Handspring Visor Deluxe. Now, I don't remember who I got this from, but it, just that it came from the 2019 Peoria Ham Fest. I've been sitting on it for a long time, intending to make this video, and I just never have, for one reason or another. I'm sure whoever gave it to me is going to be by shortly to tell me that, oh, I gave it to you, I gave it to you, but anyway, <laughs> let's see, the infinitely expandable handheld computer with the soul of an organizer, expansion modules sold separately, alright, anyway, so you can see the deluxe version includes 8 megs of RAM, 8 megabyte memory, that's what they call it. Uh, choice of colors with a leather slipcase. Now, I do not have everything. Really, what I've got here is the handspring itself. And I think the only other thing that I've got with it is the little... What do they call it? I don't actually remember. But the dock that it comes with as well. In any event, we could take a look up here and we can see... Functional. Flexible. Fast and fun. See, it's a snap to expand. There's an 8 megabyte module that goes in the back. Looks kind of like a CF card. Requires Windows 98 or Mac OS 8.1 Plus and a USB connection. The rest of them require a serial cradle, which is kind of annoying, but that is the way that it goes. Windows 95 really didn't have a whole lot of USB support. If we take a look inside here, we get our product information, which you can pause the video to read if you'd like to read anything in particular. This is, of course, a Palm Pilot, or what we call a Palm Pilot. take a look at the back and even more selling points it this is no ordinary organizer it's an extraordinary handheld computer again you could pause the video to read any of this if you so choose assuming that you can I'm not really sure I mean, it looks fine on the video, and it looks fine when I'm editing it. By the time I upload it to YouTube, the compression just absolutely destroys it. Because for whatever reason, Susan sees fit to demolish videos that are not 4K. Because I've noticed they've even started highly compressing 1080p footage. Maybe I had to change the codec I'm using to something a little better. There, of course, actually, up there is a picture of it on the cradle. The connector is on the bottom. I think the other side's got a little bit more information. Ah, yeah, what's inside? So, again, I have the deluxe handheld computer. Uh, the hot sink cradle with the USB connection. There might be a stylus in there. But that's it. I have nothing else. see your system requirements. So, I guess pretty typical for the time period. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this. I actually have batteries in it because I intended on making this video earlier. I just never did. And see, it's even got the plastic wrap. Ooh. the hot sink cradle. I don't think that it'll work. 
without having the special software. I might try it anyway. I do have a Windows 2000 computer that's sitting out. It's handy. But here is the organizer itself. And like I said, I don't think there's anything else in the box. No, there's nothing else in the box. But I do have, I do have a stylus. I can get it out here. Which is good. I don't know if this thing actually has touchscreen capabilities. I don't think it does. I think it's old enough that it's not an active digitizer, so... I'm gonna get this box out of the way and we can go ahead and take a look at this Palm Pilot. I guess technically you can't really call him a Palm Pilot because Palm Pilot is a trademark. Now that is an actual product name for a Palm handheld, but uh, it's more of a genericized trademark. Everybody calls them Palm Pilots anyway. But here it is. You can see, looks like hot clip buttons for various applications. Some other buttons. Uh, this is the area uh, right down here. This actually is for the so-called graffiti. I thought I had the manual that came along with this, but I can't actually find it. So, I don't know, but that's uh, graffiti handwriting, which was one of the big things of these Palm Pilots uh, that would allow you to input text rather easily just by, you know, writing. Uh, mostly squiggles, really. I've never really been fond of using graffiti, but that's certainly a thing. You can see under here is where all the expansions would go. This is probably not going to be a really good video. I do, like I said, I do have some batteries in there, and they're just cheap ones. I probably should remove those. There's the dot connector on the bottom. I think I know how to turn it on. Unless those batteries are dead. I think I'm going to be going to get some new batteries. Okay, now I've... i got to be honest with you. I've had these batteries in here for a year. It's nothing quite like that getting things done spirit, right? I don't think they've leaked, though. I think we're okay in that regard. We'll put some new batteries in place. I got two minutes of battery, or battery, two minutes of recording time on this tape, and now it says zero minutes. Why does it say zero minutes? Oh, here we go. Palm computing platform. Hopefully, I don't run out of tape. I guess it's booting. Welcome! The following screens will walk you through. Probably going to be like really the only thing I'm going to do. So remove the stylus. Use the stylus to tap anywhere to continue. All right. We asked to tap the cent center. All right. So let's try and calibrate this. I hear clicking. All right. So, now well, the country is not quite correct. We'll actually set it accurately. Set the time. You can see it is what? Well, 4.52. It's almost 5 in the morning. Yikes. And, okay. Well, it's not 19.99 anymore. I wish it was, but it's not. How high does this go? Well, it does go up to 2020. It is December. Uh, what is today, anyway? I don't know. I think it's the 13th. That's what I'm going to put in. It can't be the 13th. Oh, I'm reading this wrong. Mondays is the first row. Okay. So, yeah, 13. Hit next to continue. Alright. I would like to hit next, because this will tell us about graffiti. You can see, you can enter data on your handheld in three ways. Using graffiti, using the on-screen keyboard, or using a computer keyboard. I guess if you have the hot sync dock plugged in. Refer to the documentation for more details. To learn graffiti, type next. Sure. So we'll get to see me struggle with how to uh, 
use graffiti. Okay. So numbers over here and letters over there. Let's go ahead and try it. So if you draw the letters exactly as shown, you will achieve 100% accuracy. Begin the stroke at the heavy dot. Most characters are uppercase, written in a single stroke. As soon as you lift the stylus, your screen displays the character. Okay, so we'll tap next. So here we go. A. B. Yeah, I thought that was R. I thought that was H. Yeah, see, I'm not very good at this. And I thought that was D. That was terrible. There we go. Finally, we got B. C. D. E. I thought that was S. F. I'm not scratching it. G. H. I. J. K. Which looks really weird, but that's alright. I'll probably end up running out of tape. L. Should have plenty. I'm not sure why this thing. I think there's something wrong with the tape sensor on this camera. M. N. O. P. See, I'm getting better. Q. I don't even know. Oh, well, I managed to get it. R. R. S. T. U. This is so boring. I oh, figured it out. Space, backspace, and return. All right, cool. Tap on next. Okay, to capitalize the next letter, begin with the caps shift stroke. To lock, use the caps lock stroke. To return to lowercase, write the caps shift stroke again. Okay, so we'll type in just the regular A first. Then we'll do shift and A, which did it in capital. We'll do an A again, which is just regular. I don't know if it actually managed to get it. A, A. Well, it did. Cool. So then we can do this and do A, and then we'll figure it out. Cool. So that's pretty easy. The numbers. All right. Zero, one, these should be pretty easy. Two, three, four, five. Like I said, this is so boring. This is like learning kindergartner stuff. But it was revolutionary for the time, so. Next. Punctuation mark, so that's gonna be great. Um, I don't know if I'm even going to go through that. Tap the dot below one, two, three. That's fine. I don't think that was what I wanted. Uh, for the number keyboard, tap the dot below one, two, three. Oh, there we go. So there's your number pad. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, we can get rid of it. Or maybe we can't get rid of it. I'll hit done. There's the regular keyboard. So, I mean, it works. Should be pretty much it. Now we are into the Palm Pilot. So we got an address book, a calculator, city time. That would be interesting to look at. It's like a world clock. Unfortunately, this is really quite reflective, and I don't know, I thought this thing actually had a backlight. I'm pretty sure it does, but I'm not positive on that. 
Oh, that was the power switch. Okay. So that little green thing down there is the power. But I thought for sure that this thing had a backlight. So we'll go home. So it's back to the regular thing. And there's a couple of other buttons down here. You can see this is the search. You can find stuff. Like, I don't know. Nope, that wasn't what I wanted. No, I don't want this. Find, I don't know. Done. Let's see what it does. So here we go. Three ways to enter text. Um, what else did I want? So there's that, there's a calculator, you can just go straight to it. There's the calendar, that's not what I wanted either. At home, there's a calendar. Or actually, no, that's menu, I'm sorry. Look at just the contrast. Make it completely invisible. Probably leave it somewhere right in the middle. Uh, so if, I guess if you tap that twice, you get contrast. Um, application information. So, yeah, we've got 8 megabytes of memory. A couple of records. We're running Palm OS 3.1 H2, it looks like. I'm not sure if you could update this. I'm going to go under Preferences here. Auto off, system sound, alarm sound, beam receive. Uh, let's see, owner. This handheld is owned by. I don't know. We'll go the LGR route. <laughs> uh, I don't know, is there an enter key on that? I don't know, I think it might just save it. Some shortcuts. So if you type in these things. Uh, it will actually go ahead and put the full thing in for you. That's pretty neat. Network. AIMnet. Oh, look at all those old school things that don't exist anymore. That is quite sobering. I think RIS still does. Unix probably still does. Maybe not in the same way this thing expects, but... I don't have a modem, so... Can't really do anything with that. There's a modem. Which, whoa... 56k, I guess that's what that is. Now that's, what was that, 36k, 28.8, 19.2, I don't think that ever really existed. 14.4, all the way down to 2400. Alright. So, I don't know if this is how this was configured before and it just saved it, but that's a thing. So there's the general, that's what we were under. Formats. Everything looks good. The buttons. Right. Select an application to customize each button. The phone just went off. That's nice. Stirred the crap out of me. Um, yeah. This is what replaced the Palm Pilot. Anyway. I'll go back home. I don't think I really need to do anything. Actually, I wanted to go back into preferences because I wanted to see if that actually saved. Yeah, it did. Cool. Um, so is there anything else that's really worth welcome? Okay, that was the setup that we just looked at. I don't want that. Please don't make me do that. I guess it was going to make me do that. Recalibrate. Out. I want out, dang it. Done. Shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. Uh, graffiti, I guess that's your graffiti lesson thing. Uh, the hot sink. I don't know, do I really want to try that? I think I'm going to just plug it in and see what happens. Alright, one other thing that I should point out is this little thing up here. Which has categories. Unfortunately, there are no games. So, there's your main. System. Security and all that stuff. Utilities, unfiled, and of course you can make your own categories. So, anyway, and I've also noted that there's a little info button up here at the top. I guess if you push that, you get tips, which is pretty neat. So 
Anyway, let's see if we can try this hot sink thing. Oh, I guess the uh, video quality is going to take a nosedive because I've had to switch to an SVHSC camera over a 8mm because I ran out of tape. So, oh well. And for the short period of time that this video is going to take, I'm not really in the mood to get out another videotape just for that. One thing that I have figured out in the time that it's been since I did this is that this is actually an active digitizer, sort of. I wouldn't want to use it like that, but you can actually tap it, and it does work. The other thing that I've learned is that apparently this thing goes, like, goes through batteries like water, because in the time it's been sitting, it went through one set of batteries, and this set right here isn't exactly brand new, but you can see it's almost out as well. So what we're going to do, and i got to preface this because... I got accosted recently for daring to make a video that's not a how-to and not show you how to do something. So I gotta preface this now. This is not a how-to. I am not showing you how to do anything in this video. But what we're gonna do, because I'm genuinely curious, there'll probably be a follow-up to this, uh, should this not really work, where I actually find the hot sink software for this. But I want to see if this hot sink cradle and this will work with Windows 2000 out of the box. So I have a Windows 2000 machine here. This is the HP Pavilion 6648C. We'll fire it up. Really ought to replace the hard drive in it. It's annoyingly loud. I don't think the KVM is set quite right. So we'll change the KVM. Here we go. And we'll let the thing start up. This, my friends, is why we don't pile keyboards on top of each other. So I guess I'm going to be figuring that out. Okay, Windows 2000 has booted. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the hot sink cradle now. And see what it happens to think of it. So, let's see. It's got one USB port. I hope it's actually hooked up. starting to wonder if this USB port's hooked up because that didn't do anything. Didn't even ask me if I wanted to install software. I hope didn't find anything. So what we're going to do, I guess, is put the handspring visor on the hot sink cradle. I'm not really sure totally how that's done. Oh, there we go. Now the computer's doing something. Uh, it's going to want a driver that I don't have. Well, okay. Since I know how this works. It's not going to find anything. So... Unfortunately, that really doesn't work, so I guess I'm going to have to find the hot sink software in order to do that. So, I guess I'll just come down to this thing. Now, I really thought that this had a backlight. Yeah. So now it says that there's an issue, which, yeah, duh. So, yeah, this is not really an active digitizer. So, you could do this over a modem, I guess, if you really wanted to, but uh, I don't really think that's worth it totally. So, that's pretty much it for this video. So, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. Hope to see you next time. Uh, there probably will actually be a follow-up where I install the hot sync software on a Windows 2000 computer, maybe even this one. And we take a look at what it can do. Until then...